Acer recently announced that there is going to be a gaming projector from them under the Predator sub-series. So we actually have it here today. This is the Acer Predator GD711 gaming projector that is capable of going up to 4K 60fps or on the box it says Full HD at 240Hz. But of course, we did discover quite a lot of things regarding this projector. So instead of going through our usual sitting down and talk to you about all the points that we found out, why not we test it alongside with you guys so we can see what this projector can do because I spent 5 minutes with this thing, I'm really impressed. So yeah, I just want to share this experience with you. So starting off as we can see here, this is the projector itself. In all honesty, I think that this projector doesn't look as fancy as many of the other modern projectors. This thing looks like it's from early 2000s where you know your school, you have those projectors and then those big bulky ones. Kind of reminds me of that kind of design but of course it made to look a little bit more gamery with all the Predator logo, the black finish and also all the textures and whatnot. Also, if you do realize, there's no fancy features on this projector. So, uh, you got a big dial here for manual focus. Yes, if you want to change this projector to a different location, you have to rotate this dial to change the focus yourself. They do have auto key stoning, but that is something that we're gonna touch later. And they also included a remote control. So the remote control is fairly simple, a few buttons here and that's about it. Uh, we also will get more into this later and there are buttons on this projector if you don't want to use the remote control. So that is uh, an option that you can have. So this projector is also having a smart firmware inside. So I kind of forgot how to change that but I think if we hit the home button, this is the quote unquote smart menu. It is actually based on Android operating system but as you can see here, it's not using Android TV and uh, the options that you have here is fairly bare bones I would say. So wireless display because this projector does have wireless connectivity. Um, it is especially funky because it comes with a separate wireless dongle that you need to plug it into the projector yourself as well and this is probably to detach the certification process. So. That is a trick that we also saw on the BenQ GV30 projector as well. So when we go into the settings menu, we can see that this is totally Android operating system interface. And um, yeah, there's not much to configure here. So if we head into system, then we can see that it is using Android C11. I'm not sure what is C11, but there you go. And then about, we can see here there are a lot of information. It's actually based on Android version 9. So uh, it does have Aptoid TV. So you don't have your fancy Google Play Store or whatever. You need to use Aptoid TV. And then if you want to configure anything regarding the projector itself, you need to press the settings button, this three button on the remote control here. So if you press it, this kind of OSD looking menu from their monitors will start to appear. And the amount of settings is actually quite a lot. So I'm not really going to touch all of them. You can select your wall color. This is actually important because you will have to match your wall color with the projector settings to get you the most accurate color. Our wall here is technically light yellow, but it's not really noticeably yellow. So we'll just provide, we just proceed with white for now. Gamma, I'm not going to touch it. 2.2 is default by the way. RGB bias if you want to calibrate the color coming out of projector, not gonna touch that. Color management, this is also something that you can select on your own. ISF, no idea, but it tells us to enter password. Then reset, not gonna reset for now. Keystone, this is something that we can have auto keystoning like what we mentioned earlier. We can also do it in manual, but again, I'm not gonna touch that because current keystoning looks pretty good to me. Super resolution, this is actually sharpness but i don't know why they call it super resolution so if you can see here currently is at two this is by default if i disable it the text is actually a bit more blurry and then if i increase the super resolution to six which is the maximum the text get over sharpened so that is something that you have to keep note of i'll just leave it at level two hdmi color range 
this is something that you need to select to full range because you would need the best colors so that is what we're gonna do and then for this menu here i'm gonna highlight two things hdmi cec this is important if you want to control the volume of your projector or your speakers connected to the projector via your windows pc so i will usually turn this on so i'll just do that here and then for gaming this option is very important because as you can see here refresh rate we have a total of two options actually either in variable refresh rate which is what i'm using now or in high refresh rate version so this is where technically this projector is capable of going into three different modes so as the box says 4k 60 fps that is your first option second option is 1080p at 240 hertz that is where the gaming settings just now is at the high refresh rate setting we can also change it to variable refresh rate but that actually unlocks the third mode here variable refresh rate it doesn't state any details on it but it's actually 1080p at 144 hertz so i actually would like to use the third mode the most which is the 1080p 144 hertz because it just feels a lot more responsive compared to 1080p 240 hertz and then uh yeah there's really nothing much in the osd menu other than those that we highlighted now let's play some games before we proceed to the games we need to talk about the ports available on this projector so we have a total of two hdmi 2.0 ports double usb type a ports which i'm not gonna use here but you can if you want to you know you plug in some usb drive before your movies and whatnot and then you can download vlc player from aptoid tv and then watch using this projector as well and there's also an audio jack output from this projector which i truly appreciate because the most recent projector that we revealed same price but doesn't have an audio jack so yeah i'm happy to see it's here what game should we try now super meat boy super meat boy okay either way we're gonna use 1080p at 144 hertz refresh rate uh it's 0 0.02 hertz slower here but that's okay it's just the clock internal clocking system problem we're gonna lost super meat boy because this game is one of my favorite game and it's also one game that requires precise lagless input for you to play properly okay i don't want to get copyright strike let's proceed with level one and world one uh this would be quite fun should I use hate crap? Nah, meat boy. So as you can see here, I don't know how much you can see. Precise inputs. Yeah, you should do it like this so you can see in the A cam. Why do you do this? So as you can see, I don't know how well this translates to camera, but if I hold the run button, turn, 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 the character turns instantly. Well, at least near instantly. And that is where this projector strength come into play because they say that it's meant for gaming and if you're gonna have a projector meant for gaming, you're gonna need the quickest response time. And yeah, this, moni this monitor, <laughs> this projector delivers it really well. So as you can see again, turn. You can hear the snap of the analog stick and the character just turns instantly. Through my eyes, it's instantly. And remember, this game requires a lot of precise inputs quickly. So yeah, I can play this game using this projector without any issues, which is surprising. Okay, next up is... You won't go super hexagon? I am very sure people are gonna get epilepsy by looking at what I'm gonna play here. So super hexagon is a very simple indie game. You are a triangle and you try to avoid all the walls coming in. Yeah. So this is the gameplay. And it is once again those games that require precise inputs and also lag free because if you're gonna have a bit of lag you're gonna die real quick so super hexagon is a really difficult game you need to survive 60 seconds and every 10 or 15 i forgot how many seconds it will be much faster so yeah this game is also a game that will give you 
prestigious, I think. Confirm this one, this game is... It's a banger of a game, okay? You got good soundtracks or more. So from a hexagon, it turns into a pentagon and then turns into a square and then a triangle. Then you win. Oh no! Can I get it first try? Oh, it's back to pentagon. Ah! Nope, 45 seconds. See, my best was 69 seconds. I don't know how long I played this ago. But anyway, this is a real fun game. And again, no delay. I can play this on a projector. You can give everyone epilepsy. That's fun. So let's go Counter-Strike. This will be interesting, right? Counter-Strike shooter game, you need eSports monitors, essentially. So why not try it out on this projector and see how different it is from our conventional monitors. Mm. Okay, while that is downloading, there's also one more feature that I need to highlight. So if we hit into... I forgot where it is. Is it gaming? No, it's not in gaming. This one. Is it? 3D, yes, here it is. So you can see there's a 3D option here. So if we hit inside, we can enable 3D. What it essentially does is that this projector is using a DLP source and it can separate the left and right eye parts into different modes. One of it is with the cyan and magenta lenses and then the other one I don't know what. So let's have a look here. 3D format, frame packing, side by side, half, top and bottom and frame sequential. You're gonna have to get your own 3D glass but you do have that option if you want to use it. I mean it's kind of unconventional right? Because you already paid so much for a projector, might as well you get all of these features. Okay, CSGO. This feels very responsive and uh, I'm not gonna perform really well because not used to this angle of looking onto the projector screen and also the mouse is not up to my setting, so yeah. But let's see how well this runs. Oh. Currently, again, we're using 1080p at 144 hz variable refresh rate. So far, so good. I mean, it is one-to-one -one response to when I click and when the shot happens on the screen. I should turn on the volume for you guys to hear. Impressive. Very impressive for a projector. Yay, terrorist wins. No, that is bad. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. This is my favorite gun for terrorists. We got a good scope. Boy! Feels really nice to play CSGO using a projector. Especially since there's no noticeable delay. Everything is just so responsive. So after we've done the gaming test on this Acer Predator GD711 projector, we actually also tested the ANSI lumens of this projector as well. And we did that by following this channel's formula, which is to segmentize the display into a total of nine different areas, measuring the lumens of each area, and then we average out the lumens, then multiply with the height and width of the projection image so that we can get the ANSI lumens value. And from what we've calculated, yeah, this projector is really bright and it can reach 1000 ANSI lumens, which is surprisingly good. I like this projector so much. For the price of 4,999 ringgit, this is definitely the high tier projector pricing, but in terms of gaming performance, literally the best that I've tried so far. So yeah.
Real good.